a very good evening to everyone welcome to global online and here we are back with our teaching aptitude crash course mcq series now as you all know that we have started you know for nta ugc net paper 1 2022 batch we have started with crash course mcq series which takes place in two shift that is the shift which go runs in the morning and the shift which runs in the evening morning shift is taken by zeba ma'am evening shift is taken by me and uh, we have even divided the units so right now in morning is uh, ict going on as well as in evening we have teaching aptitude we have already completed two units that is higher education system and indian logic so you can find all the links in the description uh, descript, sorry in the description of the lectures so now today we are having crash course mcq series uh, that is lecture 4 we have completed prior three lectures in higher education systems so all the details you will see in the description box of the video at the same time there are some concepts of teaching aptitude where student gets confused so what i'm going to do is that in the description i have added the theory links also so in case if you are not uh, confirmed with the theory of um, teaching aptitude you can go to the theory sessions also and then you can come to mcqs okay yes so let me update you that uh, for ugc net paper 1 uh, the complete crash course mcq series new batch which is starting from 17th of may and in this particular batch we will be starting with reading comprehension now there are so many students who have requested for you know the tricks and the uh, options to solve uh, reading comprehension so we will be starting that from 17th of may so what do we have in paper 1 that is daily live lectures notes on all the topics in the form of pdf last 10 years question papers test series we have which is consisting of 2500 plus mcqs which is available on global online app the icon is given over here as well as you can ping us on the whatsapp number for the details the fees is rupees 3000 now basically how does this app work so many students get confused with this so let me take you to a small uh, you know a session just uh, in where i can help you understand how this app system works so first of all you have to go to the google play store uh, type Glo global online wherein you will get the icon of the app which is shown in the previous slide clearly and once you get that you have to install it once you are installing you will be uh, the i mean to say it will be asking you for your registered mobile number so that the otp will be you know forwarded once you do that you will get such type of interface okay now here we have course that is ugc nta net paper 1 course now once you go go for this particular course okay uh, once you buy that i mean to say here it is once you click it will be asking you for the purchase of the product once you purchase the product it will take you to this particular interface wherein you can see the content okay once you click on the option of content you see respective folders which are unit wise as per the units only they have aligned so unit 1 is teaching aptitude so folder 1 is teaching aptitude once you click on this folder you will get theory lectures mcq lectures notes and uh, mock test and evaluation test so now evaluation test is something which will help you to uh, practice the things well as well as it will help you to take you know uh, to a quite amount of good revision time uh, management so all the skills will be developed so today's evaluation test code is ta012 now why we give you the code every day so that this, there are see there are there is it's not only one uh, test in the folder there are so many tests so you should know that which is the latest test okay and that's the reason we always i always ensure that the code is given to the students in the class now for paper 2 also we have notes and mcq available so with which which subjects paper 2 notes and mcqs is available so you can see the list of the subjects on the screen very clearly i don't have to specifically read out each and every subject these are the subjects for which we are we are having the notes as well as mcqs the fees for the same is rupees 1000 any concern you can please get in touch with the given whatsapp number okay now so let's start the session for the day today we have Uh, now today what i have done is that as you all know for teaching aptitude i am being taking you know all the new questions all the new set of questions 
new i mean to say the concepts are same but the questions are in the different form uh, you know in a completely bit different uh, fresh form but today what i have done i have taken the some of the old questions so that it can be a revision for you along with the concept we have one more class for uh, teaching aptitude which is scheduled on monday so for monday i'll be taking again the fresh uh, fresh set of questions okay so now let's understand okay teaching uh, aptitude unit 1 so when we talk about teaching aptitude unit 1 first of all what is the syllabus it talks about sub units such as teaching aptitude learners characteristics factors affecting teaching uh, related to learner teacher support material instruction facilities at the same time uh, methods of teaching uh, institutions in higher learning where we not only have teacher centered and learner centered but we also have methods such as swayam swayam prabha and moves then we have teaching support system where we have tradi uh, teach, uh, traditional modern and ict based uh, uh, methods or support system and then in evaluation where we have the types of evaluation the evaluation uh, in choice based credit system in higher education computer based testing innovation in evaluation system so this all consists of your syllabus and ensure that the syllabus is properly known as well as studied very well because every point of the unit is very important question can come from any point of unit there is no such sub topic which has been left out okay so you have to be very careful on this now let's start the session for the day so here comes your question number 1 for the day uh yes in a developing country like india which among the following statement is the indicative of challenges in the context of computer based testing so i'll repeat the question once again in which in the developing country like india okay so we have taken an example of our own country what they are saying is that which among the following statement is indicative of challenges in the context of computer based test testing so whether it is many teachers do not have knowledge of computers computer will destroy guru shishya relationship indian government cannot afford to buy computer a large number of computers or in remote locations availability of computer and electricity is not feasible as i said these questions are you know not very fresh this are the some of them are practice questions some of them are previous year in university questions but you know about them and you should be able to answer them correctly okay so let's see i'm just waiting for everyone you know to come up with the answers and let's see how many of you are giving the right answers how many of giving wrong answers though the the question and the topic is very well known to you so let's see in the developing country like india which among the following is the indicative the challenge you know in the context of computer based testing so basically it is you know in remote locations availability of computer and electricity is not feasible so option number 1 many teachers do not have knowledge of the computers so this is not a challenge as of now okay computer will destroy guru shishya relationship there is no evidence for that indian government cannot afford to buy a large number of computers again it does not you know uh, we are not into that state so in remote location the availability of the facility is you know is not feasible is it clear and that's the reason it can it is one of the reason for the given question or especially for the uh, developing country like india next in order to meet the demands of market economy and to produce competent graduates who can compete with their count, uh, counterparts in international markets the first and foremost change that needs to be introduced in the system of indian higher education is related to what so now what they are telling is that as per the demand which which is arise from the market or as per the international competition wherein our students you know should compete the international markets what should be what should be introduced in the uh, current situation or system of indian higher education system so whether it is admission process whether it is curriculum whether it is educational technology or it is appointment of teachers think over it you don't have to get confused you don't have to get you know we have done this very clearly which an each and every explanation of the point so it should be very very clear to you okay 
yes so very good i i'm see just less uh, i hope that your answers are clearly you know uh, clear with an explanation also you should know that why admission process it does not talk see admission process why it's not an option because it does not talks about the market demand educational technology it is you know it is important but you know technology with respect to uh, you, uh, i mean to say market demand now we are going i mean to say we are technologically we are very sound so that is not talking about meeting the demand peer students are you know getting technologically sound they are able to learn a lot of things especially with this pandemic situation where we had all the online education so it was bit easier Edu appointment of teachers will definitely not you know is not again one more option which is close to the market economy so it is only the curriculum which is based on you know the current market demands and the uh supply which you are giving in the form of graduates or you know post graduates that will help us to understand uh, what type of you know uh, that is the system which is required in the uh, indian higher education uh, indian higher education okay now the composition skill and creativity in presentation of students can be most effectively evaluated by which of the following test so whether if you want to check or you want to test the comp compositional skills and creativity whether it is objective test whether it is subjective test sorry whether it is ss test whether it is short answer or it is project projective type of test which will give you an idea about the composition skills and creativity yes i'm just waiting for the answer giving everyone an equal chance so that you know you can answer you can at the same time uh, understand whether you are making any mistake or not that is very very important okay yes so you have got time to answer it is essay type of question where you see the composition skills and creativity now why see in objective type of question if you see there is no creativity what is the option a b c given you have to get confined to that only short answers will not give you again creativity projective type of test will again not give you clear clarity I means clarity on creativity it is something called as essay type of test which is very very important when it talks about the composition skills and creativity okay then uh identify the sequence which correctly indicates the uh, order to ensure teaching learning activities in a constructive approach so this is uh, this is one of the approach it is seen in one of the uh, years question paper also what is the right sequence whether it is exploring engaging explaining extending evaluating so what is the right sequence when you talk about the constructive uh, approach of learning yes whether it is explanation whether it is evaluation whether it is extension whether it is engaging whether it is you know uh, uh, exploring so what it is the right option yes so let's come to the right option yes so that is engaging the students exploring them uh, explore uh, teaching them how to explore explaining them evaluating them and extending them you know to to the to the learning and that is nothing but it is one of the constructive approach which is uh, which is talking about i mean to say which is involved in teaching learning activities okay so now let's go to question number 5 uh, okay on question number 5 uh, let's see what is question 5 about it is which of the following social factors can be uh, cannot now see here please be careful which of the following social factors cannot be labeled as social competence in influencing learning i have been keeping you or in been telling you that uh, such type of not questions you have to be very careful many times it is not clearly you know uh, uh, seen or read by the student and it can lead to any such you know mistake at your end so you have to be very careful uh, when you read such type of questions so let's go what are the objectives whether it is socio economic status whether it is motivation whether it is intelligence generic and specific and with whether it is emotional be em emotional well being so which of the following cannot be labeled as social competence okay uh, which is importance from you know uh, social a uh, point of view the societal point of view so what it is whether it is socio economic uh, status whether it's motivation whether it is intelligence generic and specific or emotional well being i'm just waiting for everyone to come with the answers everyone should get right time to answers but as i said 
these questions, some of them we have done earlier also. It's like in revision for you today. So you should be a little bit quicker and correct with the answer. So yes, the one which cannot be labeled as a social competence is the intelligence. So intelligence does not has to do anything with the societal competence. Okay. So socioeconomic status, yes. Motivation, yes. Emotional well-being, yes. These all three plays some or other important role when it comes to social competence, but definitely not the intelligence. Okay. Now, coming to question number six, which of the following will be considered as the key teaching behavior belonging to the category of effectiveness? So in short, they have given you certain options, which is, you know, we have to talk about the key competence. Sorry, we have to talk about the key teaching behavior to the with reference to effectiveness so the options are uh, making um, ideas making ideas it's not a making that is making ideas clear to learner who may be different who may be a different level of understanding showing enthusiasm and emotion through variation in eye contact voice and gestures using students idea by acknowledging and summarizing probing through general questions and shifting a discussion to some higher level. So it talks about what, which of the following can be considered as the key teaching behavior, which belongs to the category of effectiveness. So whether it is making ideas clear to learners, showing ent enthusiasm, using students idea and probing through general questions. You can go with an elimination round also, whether enthusiasm and emotions plays an important role, whether making ideas clear plays an important role or whether which of them really plays an important role. I'm just waiting for everyone so that you read the questions again, again in case if you feel I have read it a little faster. Read through all the options, understand them and come with the right option in the chat box. Or, you know, you can put the right option in the chat box. So let's see. Yes. So the right answer, which will be considered as out of them. I mean, this is some to a, some point of level, all are correct, no doubt, but which will be considered as more, you know, uh, effective uh, key behavior. So that is not that, none other than showing enthusiasm. Okay, emotion through variations in eye contact, voice and gestures. So this is, you know, this can help a teacher to ensure that things are happening the way it should, you know, uh, delivered the way the lecture should be delivered in order to be effective. So making ideas clear to the learner, maybe everyone may not have, you know, uh, that uh, issue. Uh, students, using students idea does not make effective teaching. It will help only to interact. Probing through general questions, again, will not make something very effective. So it's only about the enthusiasm and emotions, which are, you know, uh, uh, through various variation in the eye contact, voice and gestures. Now, uh, question number 17, what is the hallmark, hallmark sorry, uh, of reflective teaching? So we know there are three levels, memory level, understanding level and reflective level. So which is the hallmark? It means which is the important or which is vital or significant uh, with respect to re reflective teaching, whether it is clear, organized and well-structured content, whether it is personalized, interactive and high level of cognitive interchange, systematic or pl planned and quick question answer session lo logical coherent and example based presentation so which among them stands to be you know the hallmark of reflective uh, teaching so yes you can just go through all the options give me the right option and we can proceed to the you know next set of questions i'll just be waiting for everyone so that you read it once again provided if you want to and come up with the right question uh, which is reflective. So re the, the, remember, it is from reflective point of view. So in reflective, what exactly? Okay, who are the with what type of education or students are being you know uh, tackled at reflective le level, and what type of uh, uh, attention or what type of things are really important at a reflective level? So yes, those who have answered, you know, option number one, that is clear understand sorry clear organized and well structured content now see personalized interactive and high level of cognitive interchange cognitive interchange uh, 
is required but you know for that uh, year the students are you know more on th themselves i mean they are very democratic so what uh, what exactly is required just to present them to show them is not about you know uh, cognitive interchange it is not about uh, quick uh, question answer sessions in fact an question answer session does not plays an important role in reflective teaching or you know example based presentations it's not about understanding so it is you know basically giving them a clear idea giving them organized content and well structured content which will help them to you know uh, understand the things and which will help them to uh, come to a conclusion from their point of view and that is what we we, we talk about problem solving and analytical ability in order to help that develop we have to give this to the student while via reflective teaching then next is when the test data tells us that a student's level of proficiency in defined area the procedure of evaluation is called as what so whenever you have a test data okay which tells you that the student's level of proficiency in a defined area so the procedure will be called as a formative it will be called as summative it will be called as norm reference or it will be called as criterion reference so these are nothing but types of evaluation system whether it is formative which is done on a regular basis okay uh, so that the feedback is uh, discussed with the students and leads to improvement summative it is at the end norm uh, norm reference criteria uh, sorry norm and reference criteria wherein we in norm we talk about the individual uh, students place and in criteria we talk about the uh, performance of the students with set to the benchmark so when we talk about the students level of proficiency it is defined just i have given you hint with the help of an example also uh, i hope you must have got it correct and you will come to the correct that when we talk about level of proficiency of a student a particular student in a specific area or defined area so that type of uh, testing or that type of evaluation is called as the criterion reference testing okay now question number 9 we have done question number 9 uh, but in a different way this question uh, again is repeated in different way both the way no question is repeated i mean to say the form of question is not same the modality modality is also called as the process or the quality of teaching has to be differentiated from training or instructing in in the terms of which learning outcome whether it is disciplined and pattern behavior whether it is critical and creative thinking whether it is firm and durable association of ideas or whether it is quick feedback so the modality that is the quality of teaching which is differentiated differentiated from training or instruction in the terms of which of the following outcomes disciplined and pattern behavior critical and creative thinking or it is talking about firm and durable association of ideas or quick feedback so how does teaching differs from training and instruction in what sense and what way so let's see yes so teaching differs from training because in the in the field of creativity and critical thinking so there you can you know you find the difference otherwise behavior pattern or association of ideas quick feedback is you know is uh, used in both but creativity and criticality will be more uh, from the point of view of what from the point of view of uh, teaching so that is that will differentiate teaching from training okay now question number 10 uh which of the following is the indicative of innovation in evaluation system so semesterization or project based evaluation or choice based credit system or objective based evaluation system so which is the uh innovative system uh, i mean say which which talks about the innovative system which of the following whether uh, innovation indicative of innovations in evaluation system which indic i mean say which of the following method indicates that innovation in evaluation system whether it is semesterization whether it is project based evaluation whether it is choice based credit system or whether it is objective based uh, evaluation system i hope students are reading the question carefully coming to the answer as per that uh, given time so that you know you can check your own assessment where you are lacking or what type of you know uh, still more practice or in which area you need the practice so yes when we talk about innovation which is recently done in the evaluation system that is choice based credit system so it is by changing the you know the pattern of system and we have introduced the pattern of choice based credit system is it clear okay now question number 11 
uh, if a teacher considers his or her students ill informed teacher's behavior is described as what single mindedness having liberal view pluralistic ignorance or conventional coding so if the teacher considers his or her students ill informed okay that means they are not uh, uh, you can say that ill informed talks about you know uh, which is uh, not giving or which is not presenting the information the way it is required okay teacher behavior is described as what single mindedness or having liberal view having pluralistic ignorance or conventional coding maybe many of this this is a this is actually a, a part of university question in case if you're not aware i'll explain you let's see or let's give time to those students who know about it and who can answer correctly those who do not know just wait i will explain you but make a note of it it can be a part of your you know examination so let's see so it cons it is considered as the pluralistic ignorance now what does that means okay actually it is a situation in which majority of the members reject a norm okay but along but go along with it because they assume uh, incorrectly that most of them accept it so this is also described as no one believes but everyone thinks that everyone believes so this is you know when we talk about the student's capacity or the student's potential the teacher is knowing about it but you know but has to go with the norm uh, they do they privately reject the norm but along with the, you know they assume that most of them has accepted the classes like that or the student is like that and that's the reason they have to accordingly go with that so that is nothing but there is a te term uh, technical terminology for this it is called as pluralistic ignorance okay plural it means you know in uh, in many many of them are you know just uh, ignoring it or you know they are not uh, taking it into consideration then that's what teacher also can do it okay fine then question number 12 a teacher now here they are asking about feedback actually what type of feedback the question is that what is the type of feedback you have to recognize and tell the type of feedback a teacher use a question answer session to ensure desired learning outcomes in her or or in his or her classroom in the process she offers a type of comment to few of the answers given by the students which are as follows yes you are right good this will be considered as which feedback okay yes you are right good okay they can change the sentence in any form but such type of feedback if the teacher is saying yes you are right good it indicates which type of feedback either it is you know a positive a negative a confirmatory or a corrective feedback okay please uh, ensure that you are coming up with a very easy question a very easy uh, question is in, in front of you just ensure that you know uh, you are using properly the you know the question set and coming to the answer that is very very important okay so yes let's see how many of you have answered it correctly so yes very uh, those who have answered it very correctly very good it was a simple question it is a positive feedback but suppose if the sentence would be uh, no you are not uh, you are wrong and you should uh, uh, i mean to say you should you should uh, really uh, pay attention so this is something which is you know negative so teacher even can say that okay it should not be like that it should be like that but you can uh, still you try that is the best part and you can keep on trying so that becomes what a positive feedback okay so you know very well what is a negative and what is a positive feedback at the same time what is corrective feedback where a corrective action is required and confirmation feedback is something you know uh, the act of confirmation that is you know yes it is right okay good if you do not use yes it is right it is confirmatory that yes it is correct you can you know it is uh, accepted then next question uh, in in teaching if teaching is viewed as quantum which of the following modality that is process involves active give and take between teacher and learner so if teaching is viewed as quantum okay then which of the following will be viewed you know or will be which involves action uh, give and take you know between the teacher and the learner so what it will be basically what it will be what it will be indicating okay i'm just waiting for the answer for the students to you know come with 
i hope they will come up with the right answer in case if you do not know the meaning of quantum a sequence you can say a sequence okay sequential teaching you can say in that sense you can use the word as quantum okay yes so it is training conditioning instruction or indoctrination we have used this just two days back in you know, the same teaching aptitude we have used this sentence so it is something you know which is called as what instruction see a quantum it means as i said a series a sequence which involves give and take so the teacher is giving the knowledge teacher is accepting the uh, information from the students or you know uh, the response towards the knowledge so it is nothing but it is called as what it is called as instruction okay now in the cognitive domain so we all know there are there are three domains cognitive affective and uh, psychomotor domain so in cognitive domain which of the following is categorized as the higher type of learning so they i told you in on the domain such type of questions nowadays are coming they are told, telling you to arrange them in sequence or which is the highest domain uh, sub domain so you have to be remember or you have to revise this domain question very well so whether it is knowledge comprehension analysis of elements application of acquired knowledge synthesis evaluation so now you have time to think you know uh, just read it once again on your own and make sure that now this question has been taught to you in theory class also well so you are coming up with the right answer for this okay so as i said this these um, domains are very important and nowadays it is in this recent cycle it is seen that there is no direct question on domains either you have to understand what are the sub domains arrange them in sequence or type uh, you know go with the higher type of you know learning so from the following options okay so there there are various options given you have to tell that which domain you know is the one which is categorized as higher type of learning so let's see now yes i hope you have got enough time to come with the right answer so the domain that is uh analysis of conceptual elements that uh, synthesis as well as evaluation so these are the these are categorized as the higher type of domain but in case if you are still not uh, just a minute okay i have uh, the question for this i have the question for domain so after this question we will do because the next question immediately is on affective domain which of the four is the correct sequence from lower to higher now this which you have to be very careful many times they confuse you with higher to lower lower to higher in order to indicate the outcome so what which are they receiving valuing responding organizing or characterization so which is the sequence which is followed uh, as i said today i have added you know the theory links also if any student is you know maybe you have you need an uh, explanation on domain or the examples in the theory class i have taken it very specifically so just uh, focus on it and um, complete this topic or as a part of revision also so yes let's see from lower to higher so that is you know uh, receiving then we have responding then we have valuing organizing and characterization okay so you should know it see starting and ending point does not makes a sense if you get the entire domain to be set in the sequence order so you should know all the points so let's have a quick look you know at the domains as i said affective uh, sorry cognitive domain which goes with mind affective with feelings and emotions and psychomotor domain with kinesthetic ability so in cognitive domain cre creation is at highest you know value uh, followed by evaluation analyzing applying understanding and remembering this we have done in yesterday's class also with examples affective domain characterizing by values organizing conceptualizing valuing responding receiving and in psychomotor it is naturalization articulation precision manipulation and imitation so these are all type of questions seen in various cycles so you should ensure that in teaching aptitude this domain topic should not be left in option because it is very very important when it comes to you know uh, the question in the final examination so this topic should be very well uh, revised with examples if you want you can refer my theory class for this and get it uh, perfectly done okay so yes that's all for the day now as i said ta 012 is the today's code for evaluation test so you can get in uh, you know go for the evaluation test and do this as an uh, a sample ex uh, practice 
and those who uh, have a doubt can as i said can ping on the whatsapp number related to the course or something else okay thank you very much that's all for the day see you in the next class that is lecture 5 of mcqs